Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Game. So this is the more advanced tutorial on sound. We're going to be using sound emitters and 3D sounds. I'm going to be doing two examples. One is going to be the footsteps again, where every time there is a footstep, it's going to make a sound, and we're going to hear that sound depending on how far away we are. The further we are away, the softer it will be, the closer we are, the louder it will be. Now in the past tutorial, I did some math magic to just change the volume of that sound depending on how far our distance was. Now that's all fine and well, but there are a whole bunch of built-in functions that we can use to do that much better. And the second example is going to be the Doppler effect. I'm going to have a vehicle, it's going to be a little tank I created, and it's going to be going from the left to the right of the screen, and we're going to be using velocities and such to create the Doppler effect. and you can use this feature on any moving object within your game that you're going to be knowing the speed of. So that's also another cool feature to implement. So let's jump straight into the code and let's get these footsteps to make some noise. Okay, so as before, I've got the sprite footstep right over there. It's got the two sub images. I've got our ear on a stick as before. And here's the little tiny little toy tank over there. Okay, so we've got our sounds as before, but this time the sounds are set to 3D. All right, not stereo, 3D. Remember that, they have to be 3D for this to work. All right, so we've got all the steps and we've got the vehicle idling noise over there, also 3D. We've got object source, object footstep, object ear, object vehicle. So we're gonna be creating emitters. Now, basically an emitter is a reference that we can use to emit sound from. And we can manipulate the position of this emitter and who's listening to it to create all kinds of fancy effects. So in our footstep example, the source is going to have the emitter and our ear is going to be the listener. Now the cool thing about emitters is you can have multiple emitters in your game world and each one can be doing something different. And you can have the one listener being your player absorbing all these different sound effects. So first things first, let's head into object source and let's actually create this emitter right here at the bottom. We're going to say emitter. It's a variable local to the instance we can use the emitter variable throughout this object equals audio emitter create just like that and then I want to set an audio fall off model that's going to be audio fall off exponent distance just like that and then here we can set the fall off itself So a fall off is the distance away from the listener where the sound starts to decrease all the way to zero. So we tell it that we want to change the fall off of the emitter and we want to have the reference distance at 50 and the maximum distance at 200. So anything after 200 is going to start decreasing and the factor of one. So if we open up the manual Let's search for fall off. Changes the audio fall off distance for an emitter. So here we've got the reference relative to the listener. We've got the maximum fall off distance relative to the listener and the factor, default one. With this function, you can set the fall off distance for an emitter. This is the distance from the listener the emitter has to be before the sound will have fallen off to a volume of zero. The default value for this is 100, but beware of setting this to any value lower than 1, as it will make any sound played through this emitter inaudible to the listener. However, any other value will cause the sound to fade away the further the emitter is from the listener. So there we go, that's basically what it does. So now that we've created this emitter, we haven't exactly used it in any way. But do note that you also have to update the position of the emitter. So if I set the emitter to be at X10, Y10 and Z0, if I don't change that position and I emit a sound, it's always going to be emitted at 10, 10, 0. So you have to make sure that if you have a moving object in the step event of this object or a certain interval away, you have to update the position. So in this case, the source moves, it creates a footstep. And that's actually where we want to update the emitter's position. So that's an alarm zero over here. All right, so if we look at this code, we're creating temporary variable yy, setting an index of zero. This is where we determine what kind of footstep to use and where it will be. There we're creating the footstep, setting its angle, its index, and the speed of the sub images. So that's zero, so it won't change. And here we're testing if the direction is 180, then the footstep's got to be the opposite direction. Pretty cool stuff. So in between here, I'm going to say audio 
emitter position. So we're updating the emitter with the name emitter. The x and y of our source, so this object source. And 0 is the z-index because I'm in a 2D world over here. Then I'm going to say var r equals irandom range. Um, let's do 0, 7 for now. I suppose I don't need the 0. I can just change it to irandom. But anyway, audio play sound on. That's what we need. So this is the one that takes an emitter. So the emitter ID is emitter. R is going to be our ID. So this could be 0 to 7. If you look over here, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Those are the indexes of our sounds. So we can just use R there. Here I'm going to say, does it loop? No, it doesn't loop. It's just a first step to one sound. And it's going to have the highest of priorities. Very good stuff. Now, one thing to note is an emitter uses memory. So when you're finished with the game or the game room, for example, it's best to have some sort of event that's going to destroy this emitter. You don't want that memory being used for your entire game. So I'm going to say room end and let's drag in some code. And here we're going to say audio emitter free and the variable name emitter right over there. Good stuff. So now that we have an emitter, even if we put this in the room and we have our you know, object ear around. It's not going to do anything because we haven't told the game or our game world that the ear is the actual listener. So let's head over to object ear and in here it's just going to be pointing towards some things. For example, we've got it's looking at vehicles if there are vehicles or looking towards the source if there's the source of the footsteps. So I'm going to have a create event. Let's drag in the code and here I'm going to say audio listener orientation and here it says look at x we can go with 0 1 0 0 0 1 in my case if we go copy this look at the manual on the subject and we head into it here it says look at x is the x look vector the y look vector the z look vector the x up vector y up vector, z up vector. Now, if you look at all this, this seems quite confusing, and it does get more complex in a 3D environment. So in my example, I'm just going for bare bones basic, pretty much as close to defaults as possible. Right over there. Okay. So as it is now, if the object that's creating the sound, or the object that has the emitter, is on the left-hand side of our player, then the sound from it, relative to our distance away, is going to be emitting from our left speaker for example and from the right speaker when it moves over to the right and if you've got five point one surround it'll actually do the whole story where if an object's moving around you you can do that whole thing so you can really immerse your players in your game which is really 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 cool so just like in emitter we need to update the position of the listener just so that the audio system can calculate what volumes to make everything so right after all this code where we are updating our x and y and our image angle i'm going to say audio Listener position. And here I'm going to say x, y, and 0 for z index because I'm in a 2D world. Just like that, we're saying the listener is now at position x, y, and z, 0. Great stuff. Okay, so let's save that. And let's go into our game room. Okay, so our game room currently has an object source over there. And here is our ear on a stick. And as he moves, the ear is going to point towards him. And we're going to be doing exactly the same as we saw in the basic tutorial, only without any of the math involved. We're letting the audio system do all the work. We've set up the emitters. We've set up the emitters' new positions. We've set up the listener. And we've set up the listener's new position as it moves. Right, so let's test this out. And you'll notice that it will behave very, very similarly as the basic tutorial. Hear that? Now he's on the right side of my face. Right side speaker coming towards us from the right. Right on top of us. Heading to the left. I'm going to put my sound up so you guys can hear maximum volume. And if we walk with him, it'll be full volume all the time very cool stuff so automatically the further the 
source or the emitter gets from our listener, the softer the footsteps are. So that pretty much covers the same things we did in the base tutorial, but letting the audio system do all the work. So let's go on to the Doppler effect. I'm going to create a tank. It's going to be moving from the left to the right hand side of the screen, and our player is going to be listening and hearing that vroom sound that we hear when we're in our cars traveling on the freeway. Okay, so object vehicle. In the create event, I've got a direction and a speed. What we want to do is again say emitter. equals audio emitter create then here I want to say audio emitter velocity so you can use this for objects that you know the speed of and as that object moves it calculates everything for you and creates the necessary effects of sound and movement so let's bring up the manual quick and see what we can read about audio emitter velocity okay changes the Doppler calculations of the emitter within the audio space this function can be used to give an emitter Doppler effects and simulate audio motion based on the vector that is resolved from the given relative X Y and Z positions for more information on vectors see mass vectors if the emitter itself is not ever going to move you would normally not need to set these values remember that if it's not going to move, it doesn't need velocity, therefore it doesn't need this update. But for example, if you're making a scrolling shooter game where the enemies come from right and scroll to the left, you would set this to have a velocity of h speed 0, 0. See, it says right to the left, so that's the VX, in the create event of the enemies and update the emitter on each instance of the step event using audio emitter position. So we have to update the position again, just as we did with the normal emitter. So this would in turn be using the function listener position to set the listener to the correct position. Yeah, so it's quite simple stuff. Just like that. The above code creates an audio emitter and assigns it its index to the variable s emit. The emitter is then placed at a position within the room and given a velocity of 5 pixels per step along the x-axis. It will Doppler correctly in relation to the listener as if it had a horizontal speed of 5 pixels per step. So because I'm going from left to right, I'm going to put the tank speed here in these at the VX position, and then these could be 0, 0. Okay, so the emitter is called emitter. The VX is going to be speed, so that's going to be a value of 6, and that's going to be 0, 0. Oops, just like that. And then obviously I need to say audio play sound on this emitter. What I want to play, I want to play SND vehicle. And yes, it does loop, because it's just an idling sound. Priority also quite high. And then in the step event, we can update the position of the emitter audio emitter position emitter XY0, just like that. Okay, cool. So we're creating the emitter, giving it a velocity, playing the sound, and then also updating the position of the emitter. Okay, good stuff. So let's go to our game world. Let's bring this up here. Let us delete the source of the footsteps, and let's place an object vehicle in there. Now, in my step event over here, I'm just going to throw in a quick wrap. And that's going to be horizontal, just like that. Very simple, so that he's going to wrap around and we can continuously experience that effect. Okay, so sound is max. Let's play this and see what happens. And just like that, we've got the sound of the tank coming towards us and then driving off into the distance. That's that Doppler effect right there. I actually want to change the speed of the tank. Let's see, he's currently going 6. Let's make it 22. He'll be going a lot faster. We'll get more out of that whoosh sound as it comes past. Okay, here we go. Listen to this. Hear that? It's just like a vehicle sh rushing past the listener and into the distance. 
so that's really cool if you've got some sort of game that is perhaps near a busy street a street that's going on the horizontal or vertical plane you can create these emitters to simulate traffic and once you've got the traffic going past even though it creates a much more immersive experience so when you're creating and using 3D sounds, remember, import sounds that are type 3D, we'll set them up as type 3D, create anything that needs to emit a sound, give it an emitter, update its position, play the sounds when necessary, whether they loop or not, and then make sure you have your listeners set with the right orientation. And then it'll be able to listen to pretty much every single emitter in the game. So I could put the footsteps there, I could put like five tanks there, and everything would just work together depending on how far away our player is and the type of 3D sound we're dealing with. So if you found this tutorial educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. I do look forward to your suggestions and feedback. I invite you to take a look at the manual and read all about the different types of effects that you can deal with and how you can manipulate GameMaker's audio system to fully immerse your player into your game. If you like what I'm doing here, please check out my Patreon campaign, I do appreciate your support. The solution for this project can be found in the description, you can download it for free and tweak it to your heart's content. Please feel free to follow me on various social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, things like that for exciting updates and giveaways. So until next time, happy coding! And I'll see you then.